It is a hard job, she says, to fight corruption. There are always two sides, those who are pleased with the outcome and those who are not. At any one time you are seen as a heroine and then on the other side you are seen as a devil. Many times they will lobby politicians who then come and put pressure on you not to do this, not to do the other. And those that look at the opposers of corruption as devils do not always stop at just that. Some go as far as sending threats. Recently we had someone telling us, we are watching you. We are watching what you are doing, what is happening in that office. We are really watching you. The team at the Inspectorate of Government has learned to take the threats in stride, knowing that this is evidence that the office is indeed effective. The threats are evidence that actually what you are doing is affecting lives and people are taking cognizance of the fact that the office exists and that it's doing the work that it's supposed to do. When it is a death threat, however, the police is involved. Someone wrote and said, if you don't remove officer so and so from such and such a district, then we are going to kill him. The matter in that case had already been reported to the police, so what we did was to secure the officer. Appointed to head the Inspectorate of Government in 2012, Justice Mulya Gonja says the structures and legal framework to fight corruption in Uganda are not lacking. But she acknowledges that as an individual, it can be tasking to maintain a balance between work and a personal life. I don't know the last time I sat down and talked heart to heart with a friend in this office. It's not easy because you are at the very top. Some things you can't talk to people about and you just die quietly with them. She, however, loves the diversity that comes with sitting in the chair of the IGG. There are few women who have risen to this status in her chosen field. She owes it to the support of her family and especially a mother who resolved to see her children succeed after their father passed. She had the resolve to bring us up and to see us through school and to see us successful. So that rubs on to you. You feel if my mother could do that, my mother was a primary school teacher. If she could bring me up and take me to school and see me through university and provide for me at that level, uh, I, should do, I should be able to do better. Justice Mulya Gonja did her secondary education at Mount St. Mary's College, Namagunga. She credits Namagunga for her leadership abilities. The culture of Namagunga that you learn to respect authority. And if you don't, will be tied you because you will be punished. But not in the kind of punishing that is punishment that you feel is um, um, demeaning, you are punished in a way that respects you as a human being. She has learned a number of things about humanity during her time as IGG. It's the nature of human beings to always say, uh, I didn't do it, prove it, or even when they did it, they will say, forgive me, I did it, but I'm remorseful, so please forgive me and don't give me a hard punishment. Justice Mulya Gonja's job requires of her to be the advocate of the public and its conscience, which can be a heavy task. There are times when you feel the burden of the office on your shoulders and you feel this is really heavy. There are times when you actually feel my chest hurts from carrying this office. But then you have sworn that you are going to do this job. In her opinion, it is important to have a value system. For instance, I am a Christian, I draw my principles from the Bible, and if you take them seriously, there is an answer to every question that you have. It saddens her that instead of building their nation, there are Ugandans who are more interested in promoting their own selfish agenda. If you try to enrich yourself unfairly, the whole thing can crumble around you like a house of cards, and there will be no one to feel sorry for you, because when you are going up, you were selfish, you did not think of the others, and therefore, when you fall, war betide you, because no one will come to help you. So that is important. The spirit, the spirit of, of, of nationhood, building a nation, is something that is lacking. Justice Irene Mulya Gonja grew up in Jinja town and is married with three children, a son and two daughters. I try to tell them that it's wrong to do this, don't use the telephone like this, don't charge it when it is in your bed. Beware what you learn from the internet. Discuss things with me. At 52 years now, her advice to the young women is that there is a place for them in leadership. It's also possible to have a woman president. So let us not uh, 
say we cannot get there as women, there will come a time in Uganda when we will have a woman president and people will accept that it is time. She fears that greed, that burning desire to accumulate so much wealth, will be the downfall of many Ugandans. We don't need so much to live by. You need one house to live in. You may need other resources to bring in income. But for goodness sake, you don't need to acquire the whole of Kololo to show that you are rich. Educate your children in decent schools. For goodness sake, you don't have to pay <laughs> astronomical amounts of money that some people in Uganda pay to educate their children abroad. We don't have to do that. I did not get out of this country until postgraduate level when I was, I think, 37 years old, but I have made it to this level. So you don't have to do those things. You don't have to struggle so hard to accumulate and accumulate. You can only eat a certain amount of food a day, three meals. After law school, she started her career as an assistant lecturer at the Law Development Center for six years as she practiced law with a private firm. Later, she and a colleague started their own firm, Kakoza and Kauma Advocates. They existed as partners until she became a judge of the High Court in 2008. Josephine Karunji, NTV.